Hiya folks, this is Tom Herbert, the Useful Coach, and today I want to give you a very low-key warm-up drill, um, but also, and more so, give you something to explore and think about, which is a lesson on how the way that you try, try hard may or may not impact your subsequent performance or your expression of power. So, first of all, low-key warm-up. T-shirt, make into a ball, and now you have something that you can actually start warming up your grip and your forearms by just doing repetitions of squeezing the ball, right? It gives you some resistance to push against, but it's not a solid object. And so it can really allow you to get your hands in and your fingers in. And then you could follow this by doing some specific loaded finger training, right? So that's the easy warm up drill. I want to talk to you more about the more interesting thing about how the way that you try hard may impact your ability to continue to try hard. So let me preface it with this. What I want you to do is if you've got this t-shirt ball, I want you to squeeze as hard as you can. So I'm going to show you. What you saw there is what most of you will do, which is if you saw my face, I start to grimace and I start to get tension up in my neck here because I'm trying and aggressively squeezing into this t-shirt to try my hardest. And if anything, I'm almost driving power from my neck and my head and my face down to try and get this. What is super interesting about this is that what I call the body, with a capital B, meaning the brain and the body, right? So the nervous system as a whole, body with a capital B, is that it always works on whether or not you are feeling safe or not. If at any point your body feels unsafe, you are gonna move into that sympathetic, defensive or fight mode. And when we are moving into that sort of fight and flight, so fight would be the aggressive wanting to be active and move, right? That's what our sympathetic nervous system is trying to say is move, move. So either move inwards or move away. What also happens is that that, that sympathetic mode can cause us to just narrow everything and also create body tension that can be counterproductive. As a climber, it's a really brilliant sport because we have this need to express or commit 100% to hold for our dear life on something very small and express power, but also maintain a level of relaxation so that we can keep our stress levels down, that we can not get pumped or over fatigued in our muscles. And so, because of this, we are also trying to manage the relationship to pain, right? Which is this very interesting dynamic in climbing because we are using the most sensitive parts of our body, our fingertips, on very sharp edges. We're holding the whole body weight and we are managing to switch our brains off and on in relation to this pain signals that are going on. So, what am I getting to? I believe, and I may be wrong, that there are times when we want to be aggressive and use that, what I, basically the passat, the the when we need it, but we need to use it when it is needed, not to default to it. And the reason I'm saying this is the, um, the effect that this, try hard grimace and body tension may impact two things it may increase our perceived effort or pain so it would lower our pain threshold so it would, we would feel feel more uh, more pain or more effort than is required and the way to think about this is the way that older people will get in and out of a chair and they'll go, Oof. you know, Oof. 
right? And what it's doing is it's constantly sending the signal that this is very uncomfortable, this is not nice, right? We don't want that. It, it, people call it the flinch, right? And this is what I want to, to talk about, is practicing turning off the flinch, turning off the grimace when we don't need it, and being able to isolate the expression of power while being relaxed. And that relaxed is that sort of parasympathetic, um, rested, safe mode. Because if we are relaxed and um, rested and in this sort of softer mode, we can actually express power. It's that what I talk a lot about, about Bruce Lee, the way that he was kind of relaxed and cocky, and then when he needs to, he can snap, right? If he was tense and ready and in that fighting thing, he cannot do the same amount of expression because of muscle length tension relationship. So, what am I getting to? What are you, what are you talking about, Tom? So, this is what I want you to do. Make your t-shirt ball. I want you first to squeeze as hard as you can. And you see my face now. What I want you to do is I want you to maintain that same level of squeeze, that engagement, that commitment of expression, and now try and isolate the rest of your body from this. So this is maximally engaging, right? But the rest of me is becoming more and more relaxed. And so I am separating the commitment and the effort into this, but the rest of me is relaxed, meaning that I can express power where I need it, but the rest of my body has movement, flexibility, I can breathe into my belly, and I'm not tensing up here. What this is doing is it's decoupling the from trying hard. Because the same way that you can teach yourself, well, the, the reason that partly older people, right, and this is not, not derogatory to older people, right, I am 40 years old, so I could be starting to be classed as older. But what happens is that we can start to develop these silly little patterns of kind of uh, every time we sit down, right, or uh, getting out of a chair. And what that does is it just feeds back to that this activity of sitting in the chair or whatever is hard work, that we are weak, and all of this sort of shenanigans, right? Which is not true. Similarly, if every time you go for a move, you send the signal to your body that this is really hard, you are probably gonna make it harder for yourself, and you're also probably gonna cause greater fatigue, and you are also gonna limit your ability to move because of body tension, and you may run out of kind of nervous system energy before you finish the problem. So what you're trying to do is create an isolation of where the power is from the rest of your body and most of all, your brain. So how do we do this? So if the first part of the exploration or training is to first grip as hard as you can and learn what that feels like, what does 100% commitment feel like, right? And then once you've got that, you try and relax the rest of your body and your face while learning that this is still engaged, okay? So that's the first thing you do. And maybe do a few repetitions where you try and then you relax the rest of your body. Try and then relax the rest of your body. Obviously your maximum power is gonna taper off. So you can't keep holding it, right, for it forever. So do sort of repetitions of this. Once you have a feel and you have learned what it means to engage and be active in your grip and your effort maximally with the um, corresponding relaxation of the rest of your body, you can then start in the relaxed and maintain the relaxed while you engage, right? So I haven't gone from tension to relaxation, right, with the engagement. I've started because I've, I've learned how do I engage maximally without triggering this first. So the old pattern is, right, so it's one and one. 
right? Grimace and power are the same thing. If anything, your brain is almost firing your power, your maximum gripping from the rest of your body, from your neck, face, the rest of it. Here, here, right? You're trying to basically go from that to, and it's difficult because you'll see that I'm still, I still engage, everything is still engaging. You're not gonna be at 100% turn it off because it's needed for the chain. But what you're doing is you're dialing it down so that you can actually maximally engage without the rest of your body taking taking the impetus. And can you see, if you think about it, what it is doing from the nervous system point of view? It is allowing you to express and commit maximally without sending a very strong attack uh, um, fight flight signal to the rest of your body and mostly your brain and thus you can maintain that sort of low parasympathetic reserve or nervous system reserve and then it's allowing you to do more with the nervous system energy that you have rather than using it up in a kind of suboptimal pattern of dip, dip. and that means that when you need to turn everything on, you can because you can also turn it off. So there will be absolute times where you are going to go for that move, where you have to hit that move and your whole body, including your face, is going to scream, right? Yeah! Right? That is obviously required, but you don't want to be doing that on every single hold, right? You want to be able to turn it on and off when needed. So, hopefully that gives you something to think about. Um, let me know in the comments if that was helpful or interesting. Um, and most of all, let me know if you practice this and uh, if you want to record a video of doing it and tag me, a uh, useful coach, I'd love to see it. Um, and I'd love thoughts on, on this. All right, thanks.